Have you ever thought about making a mural like this one or this one? Well, today we're going to learn with our muralist Lauren Andreu how to do it. We're here with Lauren Andreu, South Carolina's most famous muralist, and we're going to ask some questions that we always want to know about murals. So, I got this here. This is marine plywood shipped in from Canada, primed it with latex paint, kind of pushed it together, and it's attached to a fence. So it kind of creates a giant mural. You can see it it's like, looks like a Robert Mangold painting, but it's not. This is just the beginning. So you have a blank wall, you have it primed. What do you do next? Do you start from a smaller image and then transmute it to a bigger image when you're making a mural, generally? Yeah, for sure. Um whether it's using a photograph, working from a photograph, or working from you know an illustration or design. Um, so for this particular mural, I'm going to be working from an actual source photo. Okay. Um, and then some. There's different ways of making it bigger. Do you want me to go into how I kind of sure, do I, that? Sure. Well, I was going to ask that. Oh, okay. So like <laughs> I understand that one technique is to project that image then onto what you're uh -huh. doing so you can see it right there. Is mm -hmm. that the methodology that you usually use? So it depends, but that is one of the most efficient ways to do it. Okay. Um, and it depends on the, just what you're trying to accomplish. Like if you, if you want things to be really tight in terms of, you know, having the right ratios of the body parts and all sure. of that good stuff, um, then it's really important to do it that way. Like for this mural, since it's going to be a little more painterly, a little more illustrative, um, I don't necessarily need to use a projector to do okay. it. Um, another way you can do it is with a grid, and you create a grid large on here that correlates to the grid that you would put on the actual source image. Mm -hmm. And then you do like, you know, A1, same thing that you have there. You just expand it. Yeah. So if you do it as a grid, does it make it sort of easier Similar, so people don't understand, like say someone just doing like a paint by numbers. Mm -hmm. So could anybody paint a mural if they did it that way? Like they create a grid and they have something else and then it just, they're looking at that one image for a while. Like there was that movie, the guy who didn't know how to paint and he copied a Vermeer, it took him an entire year. Uh, he kind of did it like that with uh -huh. a projection and blowing up each bit, doing a tiny bit at a time. It took him literally 365 days working nine <laughs> hours a day. It looks, the end result looked pretty good, but it took yeah. forever. Yeah. Yeah, I mean with the, so with the grid, um, because you're essentially using it, yeah, to plot things out. I mean, you have to have, with both of the, the projecting and the grid, you do have to have some drawing skill, which okay. you can sure. grow in and, and, and for sure develop, especially with the gridding. I mean, the smaller the grid, the easier it's going to be to, you know, break down the shapes mm -hmm. of the lines and stuff. Um, and it's usually more time consuming to do it that way. Um, so the fastest way, though, would be with the projector. I think so. I mean, it's it's limited. Sometimes you can't use a projector. I, I had, you know, I've worked in spaces where the it was a narrow hallway and mm -hmm. you couldn't get the projector further enough back. Okay. And so I had to literally like measure my source image, multiply it by nine, draw out the thing, say, oh, the leg's supposed to the knee starts, starts. here, the foot ends here. So yeah. it's more mathematical than you would think then. It's not like, okay, I'm going to just start drawing it. No, I yeah. mean, yeah, some of it I've done that way too. It's a combination of things, okay. you know, but when it comes to a physical body, I mean, it really matters, you know, if an ear is 10 feet away versus six, okay. feet, you know. So that's another question I was going to get to. Proportions are key, okay? So say you have all this set up, you're starting to do it, and then things are going well, but all of a sudden you notice that the right arm is bigger than it should be. How do you course correct at that point? Do you just erase the arm completely, start again, or there's ways around that? Oh yeah, I've had to start over multiple times. Oh, okay. Not the entire thing, sure. yeah, but figuring out um, the part of it. I just did a large mural on Hill and Head at a middle school, and there were faces that just weren't up to par for me. I whited them out and went back in and totally okay. started over. So it just kind of depends, yeah. I was watching a George Kondo YouTube video, and he was saying when he starts a painting, he doesn't know. Like he'll just say, "Okay, I'm going to start from this point, and I start drawing, and I just he doesn't know where he's going to finish." But when you're doing a mural, you obviously know where you're going to finish, or you don't too. Like you, you may start on the left side and say, "Okay, I'm going to then start on the bottom right side." Or do you tend to start from top left, go all the way to the bottom? Like, is there a methodology in the order of where you start? 
So I'm currently experimenting with all of that. Okay. So and it and some of it does depend on like the type of mural. So like again, since this one is going to be kind of painterly and looser, I, it's going to be more likely an organic process of okay. playing with the color and you know and the composition and stuff, um, which is really fun for me. Um, but there are artists who are very systematic about how they do their work. Like you were mm -hmm. saying, you know, it's like a, a science for them. And really the larger you go, you know, I haven't done a three story high mural yet, okay. but artists who are doing that, I mean, you got to have a system. You got yep. there. They know exactly where they're starting and exactly where they're finishing. Okay. Um, let's talk about the actual paints that you use. So, so for something like this, I mean, you can use any kind of paint for a mural, correct? Or no? Um, so with outdoor mural, you can't use oils essentially outdoors okay. and you're, they're typically not, they're too expensive and they're not advisable for, you know, the weather, weather. and temperature sure. and stuff or indoors really. So usually water-based or like a latex paint mm -hmm. or, uh, you know, artist spray paint. Okay. So the most popular form would be the spray paint, correct? Uh, not necessarily, okay. actually. So it like um, it depends on really depends on the artist and what they're comfortable with. Mm -hmm. I just started learning how to use spray and paint, and I just love it. It's okay. um, to me, it's economical. The color is really opaque and bright. You know, there's all kinds of different effects you can use with it, and it's great for uneven surfaces mm -hmm. um, because it just gets in there. Like you don't have to worry about you know like if the you're grooves. Yeah, the grooves, okay. exactly. Um, so I just really like it and I want to learn how to use it more. Um, but some artists just exclusively work with, you know, paint that has some sort of water foundation to it or, you know, latex or whatever. Okay, so we got the medium. We got the how you start. Now I think we really learned the lesson. Step one, set it up. Step two, hire a muralist because it's kind of complicated. If you were doing a mural yourself though, so say like I just want to do like a flaming skull or something like that, mm -hmm. but I don't have any drawing ability, would you recommend just project flaming skull on image and then, you know, get orange and red and white and then just start, start? Because you can always do it again if you screw up. Yeah, um, I would recommend, that's a good question. So. The gritting method they teach like in basic drawing 101, okay. I think that can really simplify it. Just the smaller your squares on the grid, the easier it really is for you. Okay. Um, but projecting it up is another option. It's just that sometimes that's not exact science because knowing, like if it's a coloring book you're projecting, then you know sure. exactly what lines to project. Okay. But if you're using like a picture of a skull, for instance, mm -hmm. then sometimes it takes more of a trained eye to know, oh, I need to trace this part of it. Or, but if know. you use a drawing rather than a photograph then of that yeah. flame skull, it'll probably be easier. Yeah, oh, totally. Okay. Yeah. So that's what you could do, guys. If you want to make your own mural, find a comic book sketch of Ghost Rider, project it onto the wall, make a grid, and then little squares everywhere and then copy those squares directly onto there. It'll look kind of good. There's videos that you can watch on how to draw things like skulls too and that will help as well. Watermelon. Pasti... Is this pastic? <laughs> pastic? Pastic? I thought that usually they... I mean I'm not sure what language that is even. Is it French? I would assume, I would assume looking at the accent but... Pastique? Yeah. Pastique? I didn't know that that was how you say watermelon French. It may not be. Anyway, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's the way we're doing it. So we chose this flavor for today because it's colorful. LaCroix. Step six. Okay, you've done your mural, but now you don't want it to rain and have your mural wash away. You did all that hard work. You want it to stay for posterity or for as long as possible. So you got to seal it. Now, how do you seal it? So part of that is um, some like so acrylic paint, if you use, use acrylic paint or exterior paints, they seal themselves in the sense that they turn in, I mean acrylic is basically a plastic after mm -hmm. it dries, so it won't wash away, it's permanent, but if you want to protect it from like UV rays um, mm -hmm. and like you said really for the length of time it's so that the elements and all that good stuff, um, you can get a poly acrylic um, that you can buy at like Home Depot or something and roll it on 
but there's also, I actually just used Krylon um, spray at the building. It just smells really bad. It's pretty okay. toxic. Um, so you got to wear like a, one of those masks, masks to protect you. Yeah, basically. Krylon spray smells worse than durian. <laughs> it's bad stuff. Um, not good for your lungs, which you should, should preserve oh. right now. <laughs> uh, how else? Um, and then there are artist grade mm -hmm. also sealants. So okay. I haven't used those yet. They're more expensive. And from what I know, they're not necessarily better, but I, I could do some more research in that area maybe. But like um, the Montana spray paint that I use, they have their own brand of sealant too. Um, it's about double the price of Krylon, for instance, though. And, um, but that's how you would do it. Okay. Yeah. Now we know how to seal the mural. I'm Lauren Andreu, and I can be contacted um, at my email at lauren, L-A-U-R-E-N, at laurenandreu.com. So we talked about the different methods about how to make a mural. You can use a grid method, you can also draw freehand, or you can use a projector and then look at different portions of the image at once and draw those one at a time. And we used all different kinds of methods were used by Lauren Andreu to paint this masterpiece behind me. And I hope you enjoyed learning how to make a mural and seeing a mural being made somewhat in action and learning about the fundamentals of doing it yourself. or going out and hiring a muralist to do it for you. Either way you choose to do it, DIY or hiring a guy or a girl, go for it. <laughs>